The last thing I want to show you is how you can actually split a Z-pool. Now this can be done on any sort of mirrored pool. Obviously you need a mirror so you can split a mirrored component. But what you could do, um, on a small scale server, you could exa for example add an external disk drive and Z-pool attach it to your root pool, wait until the disk is resilvered and then split the pool and you've effectively got a backup and you can actually mount that pool, you can import it uh, on another mount point on the same machine or indeed because it's an external removable drive you can take it somewhere else and mount it there so quite useful. If you just do a Z-pool split the last device that you added is the one that is split away but you can give the command line uh, another option which allows you to define the actual physical component you want to split. Here's an example of a Z-pool that has got a two mirror component. Let's make one. Let's use Lake No Dedupe because there's not an awful lot of space actually occupied. Oh, why don't we use Lake Dedupe instead? So there I'm attaching a new component to the existing component C2, D3, S1 and that will now where it wasn't a mirror before it will now be a mirror through the wonders of the Z-pool command which hopefully we can see There we go. The system's a bit tied up doing lots of disk work. Let's just have a look at Lake Dedupe, shall we? That's better. And it's already resilvered. Wasn't that amazing? So let's split it. There we split it. We still have our Lake Dedupe mounted. and there it's not a mirror anymore, we've removed one of the components. Okay. If we do a Z-pool import we can see that the Z-pool split has created a new pool which hasn't been imported by default. So we can do Z-pool import Lake Dedupe new. and there it is on a completely different mount point and we can use it as a separate pool. So that used the most recent disk I added to create the, the split pool. 
I can actually specify it. If you look on the left hand side you can see I can actually specify the device name to split away. And uh, you can also split and automatically mount by using the minus capital R and the directory name to automatically import and mount the split away pool. Now there are other features uh, with ZFS in Solaris 11 uh, including a new iSCSI server and client mechanism and also uh, you can now encrypt data sets as well so um, a lot of new features and well worth the switch to Solaris 11 okay. and uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation and I hope the features were uh, of interest to you thanks for attending and we hope to see you on the full transition to Solaris 11 course. Please feel free to contact Skill Builders uh, www.skillbuilders.com okay. Skill Builders have skills in uh, lots of different Oracle areas including Oracle Database database administration, database development, database performance tuning, uh, database stabilization projects and in addition skills with the Oracle servers especially the new T-series T4s. Thank you very much indeed.